You've got, uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with, different stories, you take your pick and I teach you something, that yeah. did happen. <laughs> A little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is, um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. You've got, uh, <laughs> you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Well. But it's changed to enough is an anus. Yeah. And okay. you've got, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got, uh, will it, will it be a bloke? Oh, oh no. Will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> What? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> Will it like a bloke or a woman? Wow. Yeah, so there you- there you three stories Okay, today. sounds exciting. Okay, well, uh, So, um, <coughs> three stories, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Looking Enough to, is a nurse. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, we'll have that one then. That one? Yeah. Right, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> do you- do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yep. Yeah, of yeah. course. Sorry, I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a fellow <coughs> who, um, he, he used to do palm reading. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, do you want your palm reading, he was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've, I've you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Yeah. So if you look at my bloody hands, Reg. <laughs> Well, That's that hod carrying. <laughs> did I ever tell you that? <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? No, go on. Is there any more to the story? Well, that's about it. I mean, it'd be. <laughs> We used to do like, I think the head teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something in this old people's home. So, um, so he offered the kids at the school, uh, he said, right, all, all sit at your desk and put your hands on the table. And everyone did. And he walked past mine and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. And he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> Was that? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, so these, yeah, these, was, well, what did he do? He just sort of walked around and went, you alright, uh, do you want bourbons or die <laughs> 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 I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd right? love to see- maybe Especially the senile ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! No, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just in a link, and just go, you know, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right? And it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, alright? And you go, yeah, not too bad. You go, what do you think of London? Crap, isn't it? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it. In excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better, but... Mm -hmm. So what are you going for, then? Oh, you've picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this fella... So there's, so there's, there's palmists going round the streets... Yeah, he's going round... And randomly trying to give they're losing, palm readings. They're losing money. Right. Hand over fist. Yeah. All right? So, um, <laughs> they said, uh... <laughs> He, he's what he's done. He's he's reading people's uh, bottoms now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. He just he just I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader. That wasn't making money. So now he's going up to people in the street and saying, "Can I see your arse?" Basically, yeah. So from 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 being a palmist to an arsonist. Well, uh -huh. they just that's that's what he does. He said the same sort of lines and that that you get on your hand, you get them on your on your bottom, and uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert or anything, or making up as he goes along. No, that's that's it. That was that. So, if, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, <laughs> "Can I have a look at your arse?" <laughs> Can I read your arse? You'd you'd drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. If he went up to him and they said, oh, "I'd rather you didn't," because I'm a labourer. I've got bad fingernails. No, anyway. that's why I've seen. That's what the a lot of labourers they're showing their cleavage. You think, but actually they're having their arse. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. really a lot of. That's what it is. And then, right? So, is know, that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. But then because That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke <laughs> who reads asses. No, but you're then, a mentalist. But no, but what then, are you talking about? But then do you know like now and again I come up with a little jokey line. Thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a uh, splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. <laughs> yes, Pick it. Let's take some Phil. <laughs> so uh You better get that idea. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. will it like fellas or will it like women? 
Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I have wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out <laughs> that, um... <laughs> they. <laughs> yeah. Scientists, scientists. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've found out... 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams are gay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like wool it. That's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. Um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's that bunch there is a is a gay bunch. They looked better. They just had more pride in their appearance. And uh, yeah. and the other ones, you know, the straight ones. And then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you got to do. And they took the brains out. Of, of all of them. Just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that they've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's gonna work on, on males. On, on, like, males and females and, like, humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so if, go on. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they don't, they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. <laughs> so you can go to the doctor and <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay. C c is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you, yes, a little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the, uh, you've well, got, you've got else? a little bent cell there. Well, that's, that's why they did it, anyway. I don't understand how they, how they could differentiate which were straight and which were gay to begin with. Before they then gave it to the scientist, wasn't that what the scientists figured out? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, How there's, could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it's it genetically film? determined. There is one. <laughs> there is there is there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I, I, I don't think it's as easy as um, a pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink, sort of like blob in there, and going right. We've taken the guy out. Now he's going to go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although the, uh, uh, the homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you knew that, didn't you? So that's, that's that one. I mean... <laughs> I just like the idea of the farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm yeah. thinking maybe yeah. he's gay. Is that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that they can, uh, okay, uh, that, that one's, <laughs> that one's <laughs> a big fan of Sophie Ellis Baxter. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, yeah. They would, uh, they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. how they... Which one, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean... Put on, like, Barbara Streisand <laughs> and see which ones sing along. <laughs> That shit is rubbish. What did I find out? <laughs> what did you, say, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other other stuff in the week that didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had the- This no. must be mediocre stuff. Then. This must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. But or it might be dubious. Go on. There's, um, there's a woman in Ireland- Yeah. Mm, who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um, she always saying to him, you know, oh, when, when, when are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that. Do you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah, Unless yeah, you no. have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, he was like, we'll do it in time and time and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> 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 Did you get that? Wow. So... That's <laughs> extraordinary. And what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was so, she was so hair shocked hair her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going yeah, to it the ground. Fell out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's rubbish. Next, you've also got. Um, What's it's weird, name? isn't it, Rick, that the stories <laughs> that we made up are <laughs> more plausible yeah. than the facts yeah. he's actually giving I think us. we tried too hard. Mm. I think we tried yeah, too That's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's hair fell out when her husband came out and said, let's get married then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want romantic? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, then, here's a good one. Go on, then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um, <laughs> she was over there, and apparently in the markets- they Bit sell, of buy spider? They, they sell lizards. Oh, go on. Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you. And, um, then she gets to the airport when she's going home, she's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So she puts it on her head. On her head? Wears it as a hat. <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat? Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine, you know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a lizard hat. Um, everything's going well. She gets uh, off the plane at Manchester airport, um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? 
She goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said, I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, they said, I've had this with me all, all journey. And they said, well, you shouldn't have done. And they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That educated me. Right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling this <laughs> yeah. back as uh, some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say, Lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> exactly. twat. Um. Not at the customs <laughs> officer! <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what else have you Anyone that didn't quite make it? <laughs> Anything we, to declare? We got, oh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> We've got an old saying, one, if you want that. Go on, then. Are these yeah. ones, sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list? These are ones that didn't make it. Oh, yeah. right. Because okay. I always I always get more in than, than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson? Anderson. I've, got a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the Dick Machine, which. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Dick. The Big Dick, which. Yeah. Uh, now, this is interesting. It's, I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitised to it. Yeah, exactly. Always giving up. Always giving up. Mm. Always just giving up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and you'll start. Right, so. Let's get out of this house. We've got, uh, we've got one more. Go on. Uh, educating Ricky to Go on, it's quick then. I need, I need educating. Right. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. How was he going out with Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah, um, Darren Brown, who, uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts 40 pounds down on the table and he says, I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in, uh, let's say five times out of five, you know, so I have a, a pound coin in one hand, I put it behind my back, I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions, by doing various things. Well, he doesn't things, ask, so but he just goes, no, you might have put it in that one, you might do the same again, but then you're an intelligent person, you're probably not where you go, so it's in that one, and he does it every time, yeah, five, it's it incredible. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown. Because well, your dad used to do this trick. You well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um, how old were you? Uh, I don't know. Probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now then. Uh, so he used to play it, and and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's all you've got to do. <laughs> that's how he did it then. Yeah. That's so, to Darren catch Darren Brown. Out, so to catch Darren out. So, no, to catch Darren out. It was a bit out, different because he did it with golf balls. But, <laughs> but to catch Darren out, <laughs> Carl told me, Rick. <laughs> he did it with a spud. To catch Darren out, yeah. the hand which hasn't got the coin in, just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> just make it, just like, extend it slightly so it's slightly larger. And that'll catch Darren out. You'll never be able to <laughs> no, suffer. That's how he did it. Or you... just put, put a pound in each hand okay. and wind him up. Just go, no, you're wrong. You're yeah. a, you are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you, do, do you, uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off, <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Did, did you, you did you keep going to the doctor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. You know how that's done? You know he's not actually taking your nose off. It's his off. thumb. Go it on. It is his thumb. Last on. one. Yeah. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. It's been a mess today, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> What do you mean it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of, it's not tight, it's not tight like it generally is. Um, <laughs> and she'll be going away with this, thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to the show, she knows it's a shambles every week. Go on. Yeah. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, Years ago, w with uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd, um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right. Right. So what they used to do uh, uh, to make themselves look rub their face in pigs. Well, they got they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the like you know the pig fat and bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks. Bricks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. House bricks rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick, mm. and then put the dust on the face. Mm. And the, the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face. Mm. And um, they'd look well under the lights. And that's, that's where the they'd same- They'd smell great as well. Yeah, well- They're Lovely, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Mm. No, but, so that's, that's the old, uh, ham it up, that's where like that, that comes from. I'm not, you know, if, if it's true, I've, started, I've got no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So, what have you learned? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely got, sod all. You've got your hamming it up. Yeah. Um, rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! And, uh, At the, last, the, thank fella, God. the fella who can 
hand read, um, an arse. <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> Have you just tuned in? <laughs> you are a maniac, Carl. So, you mentioned educating Ricky. Uh, we've only got, do you know, we normally have like three instalments. Mm. Yeah. We've only got two today. Why? Why? Just, um... Well, you clearly weren't busy Christmas shopping, so what were you, what's the <laughs> thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, like I say every week, it's a bit of a struggle finding stuff that I can teach you. I bet you were gutted you missed that programme, weren't you? Well, I would have, I'm interested in stuff like that, because I like <laughs> learning, which gets us on to educating Ricky. Oh, excellent. Slick. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a good year of stuff. We have stuff. Well. Yeah, I've uh, learned a lot. Can you remember any of the Of course highlights? I can. There was a deaf girl and she hit her head and she could hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was also, um, some people who ate tomatoes like they're poisonous on lead. There was also a fella who, a doctor who gave a blood transfusion, um, with some parrots from the pet store. Yeah. Um, because, uh, the doctor in America, and it was the olden days, when the lines were bad, said, give him his parents' blood, and the doctor this side thought said, give him some parrot's blood. So that was true, <laughs> and that educated me. That was fact. What have you got for us? Well, we've only got two, because I've taught you about jellyfish today, that yep. we need them, so we've only got two, two things to go at, and the, uh, the, I give them a little headline so you remember them, to make them snappy. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. the two headlines you've got, oh, what a catastrophe. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. and the second one is, well, you'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? <laughs> what? Well, you'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? You'd think it beat... No, you'd think it'd be... Yeah. You'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? Bughead. 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 Uh, th this can't be... Th if this is anything with uh, a bug living without a head, I'm not interested. Because we've done it. All, All you've right, done is well, find... Let's, let's just do, oh, what a cat <laughs> So is that. Is what well, I do that first. Bug one. Which do one? Which one are we no, doing? No, do the bughead one. Right, well, the bug... <laughs> the bughead one. Uh, well, we've, we've talked to a lot about animals and that, haven't we, without eggs? <laughs> no, Surprisingly, we have. <laughs> I think a disproportionate amount on it. <laughs> if you're a new listener and this is the first time you've listened, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, we've done all that. We've done, we've covered, uh, worms, the way if you cut their head off it grows back if you don't cut too, too high above its neck. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered <laughs> the chicken, um, the fella who blinked. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can't go into it again. Right, let's not go into it ah! again. We've had um, <laughs> the chicken with no head that lived yeah. for eight months. Yeah. And we've had, and we've had cockroaches. the cockroaches living for a week without an egg. Right, right. okay. Well, it's, a, it's a bit more on the, on the cockroach front, really. Right. Um, they found right that if you get a cockroach, yeah. and you cut its head off, yeah. Right? Yep. And then you find a cockroach that's still got its head, but it hasn't got any legs. Right. Right? It's not over for both of them. Right? Because what you can do, you get the one that's got the legs. Right. With no head. Yep. Sort of running around. Get the one with the head. Uh -huh. Sit it on top of it. Right. Get a little tube. <laughs> okay. So that the fluid. So is this is this aunt is go out of the Let room? This is like Blue Peter. Let him you can get you can get this for Christmas. Right, you yeah. get a little tube. You sit that on top, so the bodily fluids are still running between the two. Right. The head of the one on the top will control the feet of the one on the bottom. Okay. What about that? Good. And uh, will it continue to live? Um. Yeah. Okay, you don't know that for sure, do you? <laughs> no, that was just a, that was just no, a question that the brewery really wasn't expecting. That, yeah. well, what, what do you think of that? It's good, yeah, it's great. Yeah, just a primitive nervous system that can, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you expect us to be more impressed and excited by that? Well, did you fall off your chair when you read that? <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you think you were going to be the Frankenstein of the insect world? Yeah. No, I just was thinking if they can do that, you know, with, with them, can with they do them with humans? Because yeah. I, I also did a bit of research. Of on you did. did you ever? Did, did you come to the um, sort of conclusion that apart from the moral aspect of it, well, that the human was probably more complicated than? Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Things things move on, don't they? Do you Modern know what I mean? science, Rick. You know, I had, I had Benetone as a kid, now they've got PlayStation 2 and the difference in ten years They is have amazing. found that if, if you lose your head, a cockroach can live normally on your body, but not the other way around. Your head on its cannot control its legs, because it's yeah. too complicated it's for too your confusing. brain. Uh, so, uh, it, yeah, well, so... Then, then other research, uh, cos I thought if you don't learn from that, I'll give you something else for free, right? Um, <laughs> free. That they, uh, can clone people. Uh-huh. 
the only reason they don't do it, right, say if, like, Ricky needed, uh, a lung, right, they could clone you and make you the same, but the only reason they don't want to do it is because it, it'd be a bit horrible, wouldn't it? So and, it and, and, it would ta and it would take, sort of, 18 years for me to get an adult lung. And there's all kinds of moral implications. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, yeah? You hadn't thought so, that. So, sorry, so, cos, lest, lest we forget, Rick, yeah. he ended with, the only reason they don't do it is cos it's a bit horrible and that. <laughs> <laughs> Which scientist said that? Right, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a that. quote. Well, right. that's, well, that's not it. That's not the other one. Uh, <laughs> That's it. No, 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 no. That was that was just you know. We've got another one to come. Oh, yeah. I Teach can't wait. The, the headline again. What was the headline? The again? headline. Oh, what a cat toe stuffy. <laughs> right. So listen, right. right. Okay. So <laughs> last educating Rick here. Oh, you? Christ. Um, what a cat toe yeah, stuffy. Yeah, let's do that then. Victoria right. <laughs> Brown. There's this woman, right? <laughs> yeah. This woman. She's reading uh, Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. And um, she she's flicking through. Yeah. And she notices that there's a world record for a cat, right, with, uh, 27, uh, toes, right? <laughs> So she reads it and she thinks, well, that's not right, cos her cat's got 28. <laughs> what do you mean her cat's got 28? Her, cat, her, her cat's got 28 toes. So she was like, well, hang on a minute, mine should be in there. So there's oh, like... I missed the very beginning of this. She, she was she, 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 she's looking through the Ginsburg records. Oh, the, the, the woman, record. a yeah, woman was yeah. looking through the Ginsburg records. The woman with the cat with 28 toes was looking right. through and it said the record for uh, the cat's toes was 27. She thought, hold on, <laughs> hold on a minute, Ross McWhorter. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's got one more than that cat, so go on. Um, anyway, so she said, uh, you know, the person doing the interview with her said, you know, is it happy? And uh, she said, yeah, yeah, you know, she, it, it's great and it, it's, it's really good in the snow. Right. It gets through a lot of nail varnish. Well, yeah, that's that's what it said, right? It said it's really good in the snow. So, I just was thinking, uh, I mean, that's it, really. That's, that's not it. That's the end of that story. But Brilliant. What but what I'm thinking is, like... It was two cats welded together. Carl, now, Carl, you promised me that you were gonna reintroduce Educating Ricky. Yeah, I just... Yeah, we can do that. Have you got it? Have you, have you got something that will, um, that's something that I won't know that's correct and that will interest me? Um, yeah, there's loads of stuff. Is it anything to do with monkeys? No, we've got, we've got monkey news. We've got monkey news coming up, of course we've got yeah, monkey news people, and then now, now over to, uh, XFM for monkey news with Carl Pilkington. No, we won't do that yet, we're not doing no. that yet. Um, Educating Ricky is... Yeah. Well, uh, let's do it, is it ages ago. Educating Ricky. Oh, that's interesting, and it's correct! Hang on a minute, though. What I do is, I tease you, don't I, with headlines. Oh, go on then. And then... You have yeah. to sort of go, that one sounds good. Go on then, what, what are you I want to know more about that, educate me. Yeah. Right? Okay. You've got, uh, well, oh. uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. That, that Nelly died. <laughs> <laughs> that Nelly died? Oh, like, okay. Okay, right. could be about an elephant. Yeah. Go on. You've got that, you've got, uh, well, uh. I've got well, take well for, as red. So they all start with well, okay. <laughs> Knob body has been that lucky before. <laughs> Brilliant, all right. Okay. Uh, oh, you've got, get a lobe of this court case. Right, okay. I, I'm going for knob body has been that lucky before. Right, it's a story about this kid who was born, right? Uh, was he? Yeah, he was, he was blocked out, like, and the dad and the mum saw the baby and he was like, oh, that's a good looking little kid. Sure. And they were proud and that. And then, uh, and they're, like, they're surprised that it's a good-looking little kid. Yeah, yeah. Like it could have been a, uh, it could have been a frog, and they'd have gone, "Oh, he's got your eyes." And then uh, the doctor goes, "Yeah, it is." But uh, look at that. What? He said it's a boy and uh, hasn't got a knob. <laughs> I love the doctor saying that. <laughs> I love this GP. Right. Oh, this midwife saying that. <laughs> oh, he's a little boy. Yeah, yeah, but no knob, baby. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. I, 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 I mean, think. Right. No, but I'm speeding it up a bit. All right, come on, so the baby's right, so born. the baby's like and that, and the, baby's says that and the woman's like, oh, it's our first as well, and stuff, right? She's really gutted. She's What's the second gonna be like? So, uh... Go ahead. So, <laughs> just a knob. Doctor says, yeah. <laughs> Look like Carl. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so, go on. Um, so the doctor says, well, I'll leave it with you for a bit, get used to the idea, right? <laughs> As opposed to throwing it away. 
So he wanders off. Yeah. He comes back with a smile on his face. Right? Found the knob. So the mum and dad are like, what's, what, you know, what are you smiling about? He says, you're not going to believe this. Baby's just been born. It's got two. <laughs> right? You can have one of them. And they did a little, uh, <laughs> little operation. Where did you get this information from? That's in a book. <laughs> what book? Is, Is it the same as the book that you carry round with you? No. With the woman with three legs, the, the juggler with nine arms, and the bloke who found shagging a chicken under a rock? <laughs> Is it in that book? Well, weird though, isn't it? Well, it's not true. It is true. What? In the same hospital, there was a baby born without yeah. a knob. Luckily, the, the, it's Carl. <laughs> what happened? But you're not, but you swear to God, you're not making. The doctor make came back smiling because you won't believe it. There's, uh, yeah. there's a baby there with an excess of a knob. It happened. Honestly, I'm not. All these things are not made up. The the educating stuff. That's that's why I do it, isn't it? Teaching you stuff. Always teaching you stuff. Yeah, that. I, I was All right, not... if anyone can confirm the baby with no knob, they're going to the confirm because they're going to go to the same dubious website that Carl got it from. I always try to be level-headed and reasonable in these situations. And it's you always, always, it's always it. Guatemala or Mexico. A baby that Rodriguez there was born without a knob. Luckily, baby next door, and then and then I was one two knobs. <laughs> what a load of shite! <laughs> Carl, yeah. what you got lined up for us now? Um, right, well, you've got a choice. Nelly dead? You can have a bit of educating. Yeah, that's how educating, come on. Educating, uh, Ricky. I sh can we just clarify what this is? I think a lot of new listeners perhaps don't, aren't familiar with this. It's when Carl looks on the internet and finds a weird story about, um, you know, the, the double, double knob, um, fun, and tells me about it, and it's usually not true. <laughs> okay. If it is true, I know it already. <laughs> Go on then, Carl. Um... They're not really weird stuff, it's just stuff that's gone on. That's yeah. interested me, that's all it's yeah. about, and I educate right. about it. I yeah. should just confirm that we've had a number of emails that say the baby born without a knob and then having one transplanted from a baby that luckily enough had two knobs yeah. is apparently true. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. listen, yeah. listen, so, uh, I, I don't question that you could that. be born with a deformity and get someone's, you know, fingers, knobs, uh, what I'm saying is, it didn't happen with a doctor goes, I'll leave with it, I, I don't believe it, that baby's got two knobs. <laughs> exactly. What a coincidence. <laughs> I bet that little bit of information isn't in there, is it? Sure. That he went out the door, I'm gonna get a coffee, came back, uh, bloody hell, hold on, look, here's an extra knob, I found an extra knob. <laughs> uh, it, we, we can put that knob on there. Perfect. Right, well you've gone, you've, uh, you've opted for the headline, it nearly died. Right? Yeah. It's about this elephant. Yeah. Um, eight years old. Yeah. In Africa. Yeah. Right. It's had quite a good life from that. Yeah. Um, but then what happens is, I don't know what it's been eating, but, um, <laughs> his teeth fall out. Yeah, that's what the Out of most elephants die of that because they grind them down, the, the teeth, until they can't chew anymore and they- most yeah. elephants of old- uh, dying of old age with an elephant is the fact that you haven't got teeth anymore. Hmm. Well, it's had a good innings, it was 80. Yeah. Right? Um, so anyway- They used so... to pop the food up and feed it to it and it lived quite happily? No, what they did was, the village got together, Said, uh, oh, the food for that's it. sad, isn't it? Um, made it some false, false teeth. teeth. Made it some teeth. Out of wood. Wooden teeth. For this elephant, that's 80. <laughs> what do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know if it's true, I don't know what I mean. No, it is, forget that. You've been proved wrong once. It is true. What do you think about that? Oh, but, it, but it, Carl, it's like saying, yeah, me auntie Nora saw a ghost. What do you think about that? There's no comment. I can't comment. On it. Would you have gone to the trouble, is what I'm saying? To build an elephant some it's teeth. It's 80, it's 80. Yeah. With all the problems Africa's got and that, and they're messing about making teeth for an elephant. What problems have Africa got? Well, there's not enough food to go around, so if an elephant's dead, that's a bit more food left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why? Yeah, but you're assuming this is in the middle of a village where there was famine and starvation. It might have been, it, it might have been South Africa, Kenya, no. you don't know, it's not all, it's not all Ethiopia or... If it was a busy city, people in the village wouldn't have time to be messing about with making teeth and that, would they? It was a little village. <laughs> a little village. Yeah. And a local elephant. A local elephant. Like at local post office, I'll meet you by the elephant. No, to be fair, Rick, I think I saw Bob Geldof on TV saying, please, people, stop making elephants' teeth. Uh, they are eating all the food, we're sending it over there with the number, where's the teeth? <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know, it's possible. Send us the I mean, teeth. it's possible. It's possible they've made this elephant some, some, uh, some dentures. It is possible. 
Wouldn't yeah. it have been easier to just solve it? Exactly. I'd have thought, it up, serve it some soup or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're making his teeth, you know, it's a bit, it's a, I'd, I'd have thought, it's a, you know, I wouldn't have thought it would work for very long and I wouldn't have thought the elephant uh, would understand that it was teeth, so uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to thought that the villagers could do it. I mean, top veterinary surgeons could have done some that, but I think they made it all goodwill, but I don't want to thought it worked, so they probably end up dying or pulping it like I suggested. But, you know, thanks very much, play record. Right, okay, you got the final educating Ricky, Carl? Uh, Get a load of this court case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened was, right, uh... Allegedly. Uh, fellas in court for something that he shouldn't have done, right? Yeah. You got all the detail then, at your fingertips. And the jury says, uh he's guilty, right? And the judge went, what, he's not guilty, off you go then, right? He misheard it. Um yeah. he couldn't do anything about it, cos once, once the judge has sort of said, you're not guilty, off you go, off you go, you can go home, and the jury were like, what, what are you, hey, what are you doing? He said he's, he's guilty. And he's like... What, what do you think of the Thorns album? I'm quite a big fan, Rick. Yeah, I like that sort of alt country sound. I think. I know. Uh, and that compilation you made, that was that sort of thing. really good. The Jaghawks. Thanks for that. By no, the way, it was the Angin one, wasn't it? There was the Angin one that happened. Are you still here? Um, have you, what, what bands have you got? Been checking out recently? Any new? Oh, things? just exploring all kinds of stuff. Obviously, you know, I like dipping back into the old stuff. I've tell you, I've been appreciating a lot recently, Rick. Billy Bragg. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah great guy. Great guy. Isn't he playing? Isn't he playing? He's playing in March. Yeah, you might want to try. You heard about the, the Angin one when, the, when the fellow was sorry, mate. Go, go on. When the fellow was hung. Well, hung. Uh, he, he was hung and uh, hung. He was, sorry, was hung. He was hung by a rope. So isn't that? No, no. I think it was. Wasn't he uh, a Chinese emperor? <laughs> and the I mean, wasn't he hung? Yeah. Sorry, was sorry. He was hung. Some fellow who'd done something. They the hung him. Oh, it's not a word anymore. He was on. Well, don't be doing that again, because you said squoze wasn't a word, and then I showed you a menu today that someone sent, and it said fresh orange. Yeah. Squoze. In inverted commas, and next to it was the word colour, spout C O L O R. So, presumably, either American menu, right, in which case there's loads of American words that we don't use, or it's just a badly typed piece of work. Anyway, there was a bloke that was on. He was hung on that, uh, but he, he didn't die. Hung on that, he was definitely a Chinese, yeah. De hung on yeah. that, yeah. I remember him now, yeah. He didn't die, and they said, oh, just hang on a minute whilst we change the rope and that, and he stood there waiting, changed yeah. the rope. They, uh, tried to, you know, do it again, and, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work, right. So, uh, yeah. um, they got another rope, right? No. Didn't work, and, uh, and then they, they had to let him go because it's like a there's a well known saying or something from from this thing. Yeah. Do what? You, have you seen um have you do you like uh, Oh My Car Is On by um so you know, Tim Burton's new single? I don't know that I'm actually. It's brilliant. Can we play it a bit later? Now. Yeah, we play it. Um, let's play a record now and we'll, um, we'll um, talk more of it later. Hello, welcome to the third in this uh, new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merch, hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. We've had loads of emails, uh, thank you for those. Sorry we can't reply to them all personally, but, uh, keep them coming, some interesting ones. There's one in particular here, uh, from a guy who says, I see there is less swearing now you're charging for the podcast. Dumbing down already, question mark. Yeah. Well, interesting. I don't know how that's dumbing down. Well, no, no, not swearing. Oh, that's interesting. Not swearing is dumbing down. And also, the fact that he's complaining that we're not swearing enough. <laughs> yeah. What sort of a cunt would bother writing that email? I don't know, mate. I don't know. But I know he's just some kind of fucking cocksucker. What have you got, Annie? Well, um, now, of course, a couple of weeks back, you gave the rather long-winded but fascinating, um, sort of brain teaser, conundrum, philosophical question about the, uh, heaven and hell doors. I know. And there's been a number of responses to that. I know, that. I know, Explain I know. Explain your error. Well, I got it, I know, I realised as soon as we put it out there that I, I should have said, uh, assume no prior knowledge. Otherwise, you can just say, hold up a cat and say, is this a dog? Or you can say, what's my name? But they don't know anything about you, that's the thing, they only know about their selves, and I should have said that. Yeah. You so know, are you willing to just now say that you've embarrassed yourself? Oh, I've embarrassed myself, I should have said, yeah. yeah, it's got to be about, it's only about the, uh, you can ask questions. Well, do you know what, it's a bigger man than many that can admit that mistake. Or, a man that's banged to rights and obviously caught out <laughs> yeah, and has exactly. no choice. <laughs> well, 
It's quite interesting to, to wade through the emails and find out uh, the kind of people that are listening, get a sense of the different listeners. And uh, I know you, Rick, have met some of the big celebrity names that have listened to the show, and it's mm. sort of because you've actually met them. Mm. Um, but it's, now we've got celebrities who are just emailing themselves, e emailing in, just letting us know. This one is from a guy called Aaron. He says, My name's Aaron Douglas, and I play Chief Tyrol on TV's Battlestar Galactica. Oh, right. And he listens to the show in his trailer. Now, I don't watch Battlestar Galactica. I hear it's very good. Yeah, but it's I, nice I, to I, know I that. Don't, I, I, don't watch it, I, I don't watch any of those things, but uh, uh, that's. Uh, but I, but uh, I'm nice, it's nice that. The Chief Tyrol, and for those of you that, that, that watch Battlestar Galactic, I'm sure that means something. But it's uh, nice that he got in touch. But I'm just thinking, who would you, in an ideal world, Rick, who would be your ideal listener and celebrity listener? Um, well, it's not too much celebrities for me. I like the idea that uh, captains of industry or, or scientists or people actually doing something worthwhile are listening. That's what excites me, because they hear... You know, we've had a couple of emails from people who are doing, um, you know, PhDs and, and uh, psychologists and that, and that, and that excites me more that these academics are listening. Or so, or, uh, I mean, who's the weirdest person you think that, who's got, who should have more time on their hands, you know, um, uh, uh you know, Stephen Hawking. Imagine Stephen Hawking <laughs> listening yeah. to this show. You know, he's putting together the, you know, the formulation for uh, the, the universe, but he's going to listen to a little bit of monkey news from Carl Pilkington. Imagine uh, Stephen Hawking emailing us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I mean, that would just blow our minds, wouldn't it? I was, that he's I was, got time to do that. That he's got the inclination to bother doing that. He's, al he's always online, though, isn't he? He's always hooked up. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> well, he's always got that little computer on. Why not? Sure, that's one of the perks. You can just bung an email out whenever. <laughs> I'm not having a go. I just mean, I, that's, that's what I'm thinking. He's sat there with his little computer. I'd, 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 out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, I'd probably like to have a chat with him about space and that, because I can't get my head around it. Carl, what? you can't get your head around frozen foods. What a chance are you going to have with the universe? No, but just putting stuff out there, the, you know, I mean, it freaks me out when I'm, when I'm lying there in bed at night huh. and I think about how this world... On, on Friday, right, I was in, I was in bed with Suzanne and I said, could the world fall? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone from Chicken Licking. Wow, I that's mean... a hell of a bit of pillow talk, that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't foreplay hell? <laughs> oh God! But but I'd like to sort of have a chat with him because I reckon he could put it in a way that I could understand it. Oh, I wish an Inuit was listening. Did I not tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think, well, I don't think he lives, he lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologies for, if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit? Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I'm so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think of those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit. Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet someone there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. You know? Skinning stuff. <laughs> Skinning stuff, yeah. What little stuff to skin? Uh, you know, seals. Seals. Yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about around there? <laughs> Why are seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right, would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a dog, <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to I dog. It. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have, like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. I don't know what... This I... is it again about saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's he doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say! <laughs> it's between a fish and a dog! 
that that bloke, the Eskimo who emailed in, Inuit. would he would he be in a igloo thing? Probably not, no. Well, no, not- I mean, I don't think many igloos have got internet capabilities. I don't know, I don't want to slag them <laughs> off. But why aren't we saving them? Why aren't we <laughs> aiming- those sort of... When you build it, leave a little hole. Yeah. That's where the- But yeah. those kind of igloo internet cafes. They yeah, they go there, there, they all go to one <laughs> igloo, yeah. yeah. But why- why are they being left alone to live like that when it isn't great? What? Well, we're always eager to help everyone in the world, aren't we? We're always like going, oh, look, them people are fed up, let's build the city up for them, give them a, you know- coffee shop and all the rest of it. Mm. They're mm. being left alone. For them. They're being left alone in, in igloos and stuff. Yeah. Why isn't anyone saying But they're not asking for help. They're happy. Well they're not necessarily happy, but they they that's the way they live, that's where they choose to live. But why hasn't anyone just gone over and gone, Do you know what, we can make it a bit better for you? Well they have. I've never had a leaflet through the door saying help an Eskimo out or, you know, clothing for Eskimos. There's the most remote people in the world eventually Someone gets them some whiskey and fags, and that's the end of them as a culture. It happens all around the world. There can be this idyllic, idyllic world where there's no stress, and soon they're they're watching come dancing on telly, knocking back some <laughs> whiskey and smoking forty fags but, a day. But they're not moving. Surely are dancing they? on ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but what what I mean is like Oxfam collects clothes for people in Africa where it's warm. Probably don't need a jacket. Nothing for Eskimos where it's it's freezing. Where they'd be quite happy to get a jumper in the post. Right, okay. So what are you suggesting? To Africa we send, what, parasols and sun cream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Right. Guns Traven or something. Oh right, yeah. Um, he's he's pretty good. Mhm. Mm um, just like the way, you know, he cuts stuff up, shows you how the body works and that. Sure. Um, and have you learnt anything from that? Um, well, I don't. Is he is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that he's always. I mean, I could cut a body up. I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a proper doctor. Well, well, he's, he sort of, uh, sort of cuts bodies up on the telly and, uh, sort of goes, is, is how, like, the intestines work or whatever. Right. And he just, uh, he holds them up, fills them with food, um, and he goes, look, they go fatter. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything, like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't- I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because it- uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was like miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just- just have a- just have a straight- do you know no, what I mean? Straight it's to, down. it's to increase the surface area for absorption. So, a foot long intestine, you wouldn't absorb much food. Whereas, you go down, you know... Yeah, but just have more points in it where it has to go through some sort of filter. What are you talking about? Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us, it really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. In yeah, your mind, you some kind of what, some kind of kaplunk style No, but what, what, what I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was, it might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating like... Yogurt. <laughs> so I mean, we, we don't we don't need anything that you know is 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 doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up, and in aura, right? <laughs> All her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how <laughs> she's got teeth, but she don't need them. No, but that's well, how we're moving on. intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet. Um, Identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, "What can we do?" Right? And one of the twins said, "You have my arm," right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his his twin, so his twins got like three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What um, for a laugh? They were born. So what? They no, what, like, what, what doctors doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say this is what we want, and no, 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 no. Doctors don't go. Well, if he wants another arm, and I'll take another. They don't. Doctors don't do that. 
What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go- Dr. Jekyll. I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we- Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it is annoying. What do you think these doctors sit around doing? Playing Mr. Potato? Or what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, cause it's like- Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose, or a beard, or two front teeth that, uh, to make them look different, right? Not- I'll tell you what we could do, go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Alright, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle, right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctors and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers, how many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. No, I still think it's there with like a little knuckle and a, and you know, fingernail, fingernail and that on Well, I'm, I assure you it isn't. They've probably used the finger as a basis to then build up some sort of uh, uh, knob based no, it, organ. If, if you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger for- Well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your, your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft, uh, to near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But, that's why they um, very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah, use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I, I saw some bloke the other day in a meeting, and on his desk, he had a picture <sighs> of of his kids who were twins, right? And uh, they did, they looked alike, and he did that thing of dressing them the same, that, that sort of thing, that sort of, you know, annoys me, right? Um, and I sort of said, you know, you've only got a small desk, just have a picture of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like I was mental. That's weird, amazing. Right? It's not. It's, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's sort of common you sense. You know what you've come up with there? No solution to anything. <laughs> That's what you've come up with there. Well, you've come up with the best no solution I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Or it's solutions to problems that don't exist. <laughs> no, yeah. because more room on the desk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's no solution to a problem that didn't exist in the first place. Well done. There was a picture on the, when I was on the, the plane coming back from here, there was a picture of this new luxury hotel. It'll be, I think, $10,000 a night to stay there. It looked extraordinary. It was a hotel, and the best rooms were built under the water, under the sea. Wow. So it was an amazing, the best hotel we've ever seen, mm -hmm. but surrounded on all sides by glass, and out of it you could see the sea, the sharks, the fish. Mm, I don't think I'd like that. No? But that, again, that's just one of them hotels where it's, where it's over the top for over the top sake, isn't it? Like where they have twelve yeah. course meals. Well, just have two, but make them bigger, rather than dragging it out and get, there's a, there's there's the first course. You know, a couple of you know snails. Yeah, it's just uh, for me all that is. Don't eat a snail. Don't have one snail. Have one. Eat one big tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> if you want slow food, don't have uh, loads of little snails. Yeah, there's a giant tortoise. <laughs> Tuck into that. <laughs> Feeds ten. <laughs> But, 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 but it's what you were saying before, when you start having to take a risk with food, like the fish that can kill you mm. if you eat it, don't bother. Uh, there's apparently a delicacy in Japan, again, someone could verify this, where they eat a live little octopus, and it can stick to your throat, because it's obviously fighting for its life. I mean, good, again, you don't need to eat a live octopus, what are you thinking? How uh, cruel is that? Well, how fresh do you need your food? <laughs> it's just not, it's not, do you know what I mean? <laughs>
<laughs> but I, re I always remember this story when I was a kid about um, some bloke who, a uh, bit, bit sad, the story, but weird. He had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, uh, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, uh, you know, plenty of vitamins and stuff, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was he was fed up because he loved his meat, um, and his his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. Oh, he wants some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um... <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate just about to tuck in and the cancer comes out from <laughs> his throat. <laughs> what? No, he's some I know, he sounds really weird, but he's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was Dude, growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> Dude, it was sort of dying. Again, it, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from is from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's of... sitting there. So it's actually sitting there in the throat. Why? I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all. Just That's listen a symbolic to you, story. It's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you've if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're, they're all over the plate yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> the other thing that I was told when I was younger about medical stuff and that, um... Who's telling you this stuff? My mum. My mum told me about it. Jeez. Cause she always says to me, Dad, because he has too much meat, and she's always like, you know, remember the the, the feather with the and he goes, yeah, the oh, troll in his throat. But um, <laughs> my gran, uh, she had something uh, wrong with her eyes, and they sort of took them out, <laughs> and they were just dangling on a cheek, and she could still see through them. They were operating on her. Oh, yeah, they, you would have, yeah. They sort of say, No, 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 no. She wouldn't have been conscious though. No, they were then. Oh, it's yeah. something to do with the eyes, and it is like, if no. You, no, it's no good operating on eyes if your eyes are asleep. What do you mean, your eyes are asleep? It's like a heart, isn't it? You want to keep them awake. No, so you, keep what do you mean open. you want to keep them awake? What, heart surgery is blokes awake? Stop talking shit no, what, all your life. what I mean is they don't stop the heart. They, they, they sort of course they don't stop your heart, because it kills you. Yeah, I know, so what I mean is it's like the eyes, they wanted to make sure they were working, so the, the only way to do it is keep her awake. No, it's not, because you don't know whether they're working or not. You can't see what she sees. What, you think, it, you, you can plug something in and see what people are thinking. It was something like no, that. No, no, it wasn't something like that. Well, she could see. She no, said she it was couldn't. really weird. How, like, you know, you can see... She could see her knees. <laughs> 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 that is bollocks. Oh, Jim Barty, that is only gone and written it down, the little... That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One is the <laughs> Congo. There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. No, we're but, not sure if we should. But, um. <laughs> Conga! <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> We are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the... who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? 
my mate went to visit him and he said it's all- it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's- all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here? What was that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, see. he just said, oh, come- come round and see us. And he's- he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army but was turned away and that's the closest thing you can sort of- How is that similar like to living Oh, that's in exactly the army. like the army, yeah, yeah. Where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. Exactly. He's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's he got down there? Just- just stuff. Just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He that's dug- he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school. He knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could lean on the wall. <laughs> yeah, some And would go through it and stuff. And um, they knocked it all down and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't shock me. When the, the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and, uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to- that's <laughs> You spent to far too long with him if that, now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I- I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a bit man living in a hole it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea because shark attacks are up. Yeah. Probably four a year now. <laughs> well, he just says here, yeah, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? Just because there isn't now, is there? We've got loads of land. So just, hmm. you know, one or the other. We walked out of the sea. Now, this is what I mean about going backwards. <laughs> getting back in it again. <laughs> we came from the sea originally. Now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> The rules. The rules, according <laughs> the to rule, Carl Pilkington. The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God. Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the pig woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> that made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just the pig-headed woman? That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig of the women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square, i.e. go down there and see the pig woman in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there, though, and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feed. Watched a <laughs> film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, I, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just gonna sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do, do that in a cinema? Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink. Um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They drink 100%, they drink ethanol. You know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees, 
get uh, addicted in, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed, and they've got guard bees, and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bankers. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away, and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face, but I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh. Let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, it, it's a surprise that they can fly, okay? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me you're not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody's saying There's no to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Well, it's that time, isn't it? Rockbusters. Ah, oh, yes, the time that no one looks forward to. Uh, Jim can't see that, Rockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, so, uh, gave you three clues last week, three cryptic clues. Mm. Um, some initials of a band or an artist you emailed in. Mm. Uh, what Rob, again? Rob Harding got it, right? Oh, nice work, Rob. So, well done. Mm. Um, the three clues, the first one was, uh, RP for the initials. Uh, and the clue was steal that woman's flower, right? Yeah. So that was a cryptic clue. The answer today is, is rob her plant. Robber, rob, robber rob, plant. Robber plant. I don't know who that is though. Rob, is there, there's rob, no artist called Robert that's, plant. That's like Robert plant. Robert. 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 No, no, Robert. Robert plant. Yeah, but you is don't say that. You just like, oh yeah, I'm into. Well, you do uh, say it. You you got the, uh, you know, it means like. Robert plant. Robert. Robert plant. They wouldn't go what. <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know who, are you saying rubber plant? Uh, the second one. What are you one, saying there, Carl, though? The second one was, uh. It doesn't work. The initial was B, and then that was keep whacking the cooker with a stick, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have to be a stick, we pointed that out, just keep whacking the cooker. Keep whacking yeah. the cooker, yeah. Uh, that was B, that was B oven. B oven? Yeah. I don't know who that is either, so is that a group? The <laughs> B oven? Is that the Beatles? <laughs> Who's the B ovens? Classical sort of stuff, B oven. B oven. Uh, no, you said, you said B again, again they got it. Bait. Oh. Hold on, wait a minute. Well, I'm just saying, though, they, no, they no, got no, it. it's bollocks. Oh, Rob because got it. No, 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 beat oven. Yeah. It's not Beethoven. Do you got it? Do you understand? The last one, the initial was M, right? I, uh, I just want to know who Robber Plant is. Don't, don't be worrying about Rubber. No. Because it's not uh, a nail. I've it, it's not the one in Le Zeppelin, is he? So M was the initial. The clue was Venice. It's, it's all water, isn't it? How would you describe it? There's, there's hardly any land, right? So uh, canal. if there's hardly any land. Right, it's more water. What sort of water would you get? Right, Wet. and then then what? Wetville. Wetville. No, but just like water that in Venice. What sort of water is it? It's, it's sort of muddy. Right? Um, no, no. Muddy waters. No, but how would you describe Venice? What's the what's the um? If there's more. But what's the what's the uh, initial again? M. If M. there's more, if there's more muddy waters. If there's more sea than land, mm, what would you say? Would you say? Would you probably say there's. Sort of more, more of it is C, isn't it? More, more, more is C. C. More is C. More is C. More is C. More is C. So that's, that's the answer. I don't Morrissey. know who that is. Who is that? Morrissey. 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 So, well done to, uh... <laughs> that's the worst one you've ever done! Well it's ridiculous. Done to, uh, that's really the worst ridiculous. you've ever done. It's ridiculous. Well more is C. Right, if, they, if, they, if they're that mm. shit, don't do it anymore. So, well done to, uh, Robert Harding. He's in, he's in <laughs> London. <laughs> right. Hello, welcome to number six.
the final episode in this season two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. You can still go and get the archive. All 18 episodes we've done so far are available on iTunes and Audible.co.uk. Um, and there's a little video diary we've done, a little free podcast. We may go into free podcasting, but in video, Steve. Uh. And there's a little free taster up there. Um, so check that out. Uh, go to rickysarays.com to find out all news and everything. But, come on, let's get on with this episode. We're, we're here and now. This is right, yeah, absolutely, here we are. Good, Carl, go. I've got some bad news to start off with straight away. Um, the world's oldest tortoise. A 250-year-old tortoise died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of of your life? <laughs> <laughs> you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You look like see so you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know. I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. No, but there's there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's that's weird. That that goes to show that we've been around before. Or no, it doesn't. There's none. That, I have no evidence for that. Of well, I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes. Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close. It's the next next thing next to flashbacks. It was. Um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and uh, my mum had like run the bath and that, and uh, she said, "Is that is that too warm?" And I said something like, "No, it's it's all right. This it's a lot better than when I used to have a have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire." <laughs> okay. And she was like, "What?" And I said, "You know, well, it happened years ago." <laughs> and she was a bit like, "Oh," and I I can't remember that now, but she talks about it and. You know, that just goes to show that... Because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. Well, you... I didn't know about wooden baths, so you why would I have invented that? But Carl, we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So... She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark won and his wooden bath when he was No, around? I don't want to go there, because that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you no discover? scientific evidence. No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't, don't be looking at them, because you you're only going to find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If if you if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a badden, you go oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees, and it's the same. Don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows lives. What you've been up to. Well, Carl and the wooden bath proof. If Carl proof Wilkinson uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> but this this tortoise. So if that's and also its flashbacks would just be uh, you know the same wall. I mean it basically spent. <laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so, uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, can't, get... can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl, I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't know that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's... it's but, but, better speaking. ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right. Aren't they? Right. If they can live 250 odd years, our, our art can't do that. Right. Which is what I say about our tortoise has got it right in a way that it's it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh, it eats healthy, doesn't it? it? Eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's that's probably doing it right. But to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. 
just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no, I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You know, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just... you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it, how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control when you, the when, brain? Well, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, a 